Jason Aldean's song is racist, and if you can't see that, you're part of the problem. What he talked about was people who steal, people who carjack, people who burn flags, and you interpret that as he must be speaking about black people. Exactly! <laughs> what is good, YouTube family? It's your boy, Shad, Black and I'm the Rising Channel. So, Jason Aldean. I have not talked about Jason Aldean on this channel yet, but I've been meaning to. So, he had an interview the other day and apparently they were trying to get him to act as though something was wrong with his initial song release now if you all have heard this i'd imagine a lot of people probably watching this have he had a song called try this try that in a small town and this song was basically him saying like okay if you commit crimes and you commit it in a small town and yeah, we gonna take care of you right then, right there, okay? <laughs> but obviously, in a bigger city, you know, you gotta go through all this crazy bureaucracy and so forth, right? Small town people, they know what's up, they take care of their own, so on and so forth. That was my takeaway from this. But a lot of people took this away as, oh, it's racist, cause, you know, we gonna, if you commit a crime, then, you know, we gonna take and you know, we gonna lynch you or something crazy, right? <laughs> they, they, got, they took something ridiculous away from this, which doesn't make any sense. This, this again, goes to that whole level of heightened racial sensitivity to every single thing where all you do is, you, it's like you put the racist lenses on. Put, it, put the racist lenses, like I'm looking for racism. It's like you're scanning, scanning for racism constantly. It's like, get a damn life, people. So this guy, he's going on, he's doing this interview and this reporter is trying to grill him on this. And apparently he says this reporter straight. Let's take a look. How have you influenced country? We definitely brought a little bit of a different sound in. It was a little heavier. It had a lot of, a lot of rock and roll elements to what we were doing. But success wasn't instant. 25 years ago, when Aldine moved from Georgia to Nashville with tattoos and his Southern rock vibe, the industry said, no thanks. Aldine never wavered. I was writing songs and uh, and at one point had lost my writing deal too. So it was tough. I mean, it's like, you know, maxing out credit cards just to buy like formula or diapers or those kind of things. And it finally did take off and it was full steam ahead for me to try and take advantage of it. Anyone from the heartland is going to understand what I'm talking about right now. Nearly two decades later, Aldine's had 28 number one singles. Wow. <laughs> And sold 20 million albums. But over the summer, Aldine, who doesn't shy away from expressing his views, found himself in the middle of controversy over his song, Try That in a Small Town. It divided the internet. Jason Aldean's song is racist, and if you can't see that, you're part of the problem. What he talked about was people who steal, people who carjack, people who burn flags, and you interpret that as he must be speaking about black people. Exactly! <laughs> what? Exactly. Like, black people are the ones who, who steal and burn flags. <laughs> First off, I don't think black people burn flags. Maybe they do, but I've I've never seen that. Um, but yeah, in terms of like other crimes like stealing and carjacking, I mean that's not a black exclusive thing. Like maybe you could argue crime statistics in terms of who does it more, but it isn't something where it's like oh it's racial undertones. Like anytime somebody has to use terms like undertones and dog whistles and all of this bullshit, they're just full of crap. Honestly, because you could say that about anything. You could literally just make it up. The people are making it up. Okay? Supporters felt the song upheld small town values in uncertain times. Around here we take care of our own. While others heard racism and subtle calls for violence. What was your reaction when you saw people saying that this had racist um, undertones and you know, it was How? like a call to arms. You know, it was like a call to arms in small towns. Um, it was a threatening kind of video for black people. I mean, people were putting this on like But there was, there was people of all color doing stuff in the video. That's what I don't understand. You know, there was, there was white people in there. There was black people. I mean, th this video did not shine light on one specific group and say, 
that's the problem. So, and anybody that saw that in the video, then you weren't looking hard enough in the video, is all I can tell you. Facts. Facts. The song mostly flew under the radar when it was released, but when the music video came out in July, it took off, skyrocketing to number one across all musical genres in the country. I love the song. I was excited to cut it and thought it was actually a song that said something for a change, not just a, you know, here's another song for radio. Did you think, well, this might not go over well with some people, but I'm going to say it. On the second verse, it says, gun that my granddad gave me, they say one day they're going to round up. That, I thought, was going to be the biggest issue with the song, was that it said gun, you know, and that, you know, will tend to get people talking sometimes about that. So, um, you know, I didn't expect it to get the kind of heat that it got. Um, and I think that was more probably because of the video more so than the actual song. Part of that heat was because of where the video was filmed, in front of the Murray County Courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee, the site of a 1927 lynching of a black teen. For anybody that thinks that- In we 1927? I mean, come on, guys. Like, who the hell knew, without going and doing a bunch of research, that there was a lynching there in 1927? Like, you guys gotta freaking be kidding me. I live in Georgia. Like, I don't exactly know how many lynchings took place in Georgia, but I'd be willing to bet a decent amount. And I don't know where all they took place. So if I just take and record something or any white person takes and records something at any particular location, anybody could come back and be like, ah, I did some research. It looks like there was a, a lynching that took place here in 1937. And they, like anybody could do that. You got to be kidding me. It's literally 2023. It's like a hundred years later. A <laughs> hundred years later. Like when people say it's time to get over it, I think that's what they mean. I think it's reasonable after a hundred years to move the hell on, okay? I am dead ass, I'm not joking. We're never going to forget slavery and civil rights movement and civil war, okay? It's not forgotten. It's still taught in every school, including in Florida. But we can still move the hell on and let this dude do his god dang music video. Give me a freaking break, bro. That building specifically for that reason, because, you know, there was a lynching there or whatever. Did you know that? No, but I also don't go back a hundred years and check on the history of a place before we go shoot. Exactly! <laughs> Who the hell would? Oh, let me check. You gotta be the wokest of the woke to be like, man, hold on, let me, let me do some history. I gotta, I gotta double check, make sure there was no racism that took place here. You ain't gonna be able to record nowhere in America. <laughs> okay, like in case y'all didn't know, there was indigenous people here and they got done wrong too. So good luck finding a place where ain't nobody get freaking killed, murdered, lynched, enslaved, something. Okay, good freaking luck with that. Either it's also the it's also the place that I go get my car tags every year. It's my county that I live in. Would you do it in that courthouse again, knowing what you know now? Knowing what I know now, probably not. But it's also you know I don't think again I'm not going to go back a hundred years and check on the history of this building. I mean because. Honestly, if you're in the South, you could probably go to any small town courthouse. You're going to be hard pressed to find one that hasn't had some sort of, you know, racial issue <laughs> over the years at some point. I mean, Jason, the, the, look, before I saw the video, I was saying the same shit, the same stuff as Jason, but, or before I watched this clip, I never seen this clip. Raw reaction. I was saying the same thing. Where are you going to go in America? And it's just like when people say support black business because XYZ business is racist. What business are you going to go to where you can't find any history of anything racist happening? Where? Act. Critics also slammed Aldean for the images. Aldean says he didn't choose the specific clips, but the overall look of the video was his idea. Inspired by Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. The whole idea behind the video was to show, you know, the lawlessness and the, you know, disrespect for cops and just, you know, 
trashing cities and burning. It's just, I'm just not cool with that. So it just, I don't know. I feel like the narrative really got switched over and became, you know, more of a racial type thing. And it's like, if that's what you got out of the song and the video, I mean, I almost kind of feel like that's on you because that wasn't Facts. our intention, you know. Aldine says the song may resonate with him more because news reports of crime and violence feel personal. He was on stage in Las Vegas when a gunman opened fire, killing 60 people at the Route 91 festival. Vegas was six years ago. Oh, that was, he was the one on stage? Processed that. It makes you mad. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like my pregnant wife was there. Our fans were there watching the show. All hell breaks loose and you're not prepared. You know, it's like, I got a guitar. What am I going to do? You Did know? you even know what was happening? No, yeah. not not until a few minutes after we were off stage and stuff. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I do think it makes you look at things a little different when you go through something like that. All right, I'm going to end that right there. So I think the point is clear. Nobody's going to go back 100 years to make sure that you know, like you're going to be so damn woke that you're going to make sure, oh, I got to make sure nothing racist happened here at the courthouse because black people might be mad at me. Like, what are the eyes? First off, most black people don't listen to country music anyway, myself included. I do like a couple songs if I happen to hear them. But in general, like I the amount of people that I know that are black that listen to country music, I can literally count on one hand. And I don't even I don't even know for sure. I don't even. I don't qualify that as even listening to it. It's like, it's almost like tolerate country music because we happen to hear and know certain songs that we like or we happen to have certain songs on our phone or whatever, but not like going out and turning on country music radio, right? <laughs> like that's that's not a thing that majority of black people do. So, I mean, this is like hand-picked selective racism. It is totally ridiculous. Like this guy deserves to like slap down all of these ridiculous haters, okay? And trying to, he's trying to say that, oh, you must be, you're talking about crime and not liking cops and, you know, burning flags and stealing and, and robbing people. And it must be black people. <laughs> Y'all see how racist liberals can be? <laughs> like, you see, how, you see how crazy this is? Because the main people who are saying this is woke liberal types. Okay, they're they're the types who always are gonna see something like this. They're always gonna see something like this because they got their their racial lenses on constantly. <laughs> like they're never going to see a white person just living their life, <laughs> just enjoying life, just you know, just living peacefully, and they're never gonna accept them. It's always gonna be like, hmm, I know they're up to something, right? I can't stand these type of people. These people need to get alive. Move, move on beyond this racism. Find people that's actually doing harm that actually say, hey, we want to harm black people. We don't like black people. We don't like other types of people either. Mess with those people. Leave these damn people alone. Okay? You, you lose an ally. You turn the people against us. Okay? Being some freaking dumbasses will turn the whole world against the majority of black people because a select few extremely woke-ass people uh, be it, uh, uh, of course, black liberals and white liberals, too, don't understand uh, basic nuance and see everything through this ridiculous racial lens and want to pull up all of these all of these evidences of harm from the past. Like, oh, it was intentional in front of the courthouse. Like, shut your dumb ass up. Anyway, y'all, if you enjoyed this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm Rashad, Black and I'm Lee Rising. I'm out of here.